Hello and welcome delegates. Uh, me, Dr. Shubhasachi Konar, JR2 NRS Medical College, Kolkata, is going to case, uh, present a rare case of adrenal, adrenal particle carcinoma with pulmonary meds. The case report. A four years, nine month old female child presented to endocrine OPD with chief complaint of ambiguous genitalia and hypertrichosis. Patient's parents informed that the child had normal female genitalia at birth. However, slight clitoromegaly was noticed since birth, progressively increasing in size with age. On physical examination, presence of axillary hair, puberty, clitoromegaly, prader 2, and hypertrichosis with two perineal opening noted. There is there was a large mass in the left side of the abdomen. There are no neurocutaneous markers. There was no family, family history of malignancy and blood pressure was found to be elevated, which is 130 by 90. On biochemical evaluation, there is high testosterone, high ACTH level and high cortisol level. The patient was then sent to the radiology department for further evaluation. This is the USG picture. USG picture showing a large inhomogeneous, mainly hypoechoic, solid looking sol at the left supranal region with internal vascularity. Uh, few areas of calcifications also noted within it. On CT, a large 15 into 12 into 11 centimeter ill defined heterogeneously enhancing mass seen extending from left lumbar region and superiorly into uh, epigastric and hypochondriac region and posteriorly into retroperitoneal region. The mass is seen displacing the bowel loops left and pushing pancreas anteriorly and the left kidney anteromedially. Pre contrast constant unit of the mass is 60 and post-contrast HU is 85, delayed HU is 70, wash out is approximately 43%. <clears throat> this is also the CT pictures of the same patient. On HST thorax, bilateral nodular opacity is seen in both lungs, suggestive of pulmonary metastasis. On FNSC from the SOL sword, the seeds of dispersed cells with foamy fragile cytoplasm and uniform enlarged and hyperchromatic nuclei with inclusions and multilobed nucleoli. Diagnosis. From the above findings, it is concluded to be a classical case of adrenocortical carcinoma with pulmonary metastasis. And closest differential diagnosis is benign adrenal adenoma. Now discussion. Adrenocortical carcinoma is a rare endocrine malignancy <clears throat> with aggressive behavior. The estimated annual incidence is 0.5 to 2 cases per million population year. Most of them are sporadic, but few might have a familial association. Familial ACC can be associated with Lee Freeman syndrome, Weidman Beckwith syndrome, multiple endocrine nucleus type 1 or kidney complex. It displays a bimodal age distribution with peaks before age 5 and in the fourth to fifth decades of life. The, these tumors can be functional or non-functional. Non-functional tumors usually present with pressure symptoms or may be diagnosed incidentally. Up to 60% of patients present with symptoms of adrenal steroid excess secondary to increased glucocorticoid, aldosterone, or androgen production. A female predilection has been observed in the pattern of cases. A female to male ratio is approximately 2.5 to 3 is to 1. Male patients tend to be older and unfortunately having a worse prognosis than female patients. It is very tough to differentiate between benign adenoma and malignant adenocortical carcinoma. However, the following features, imaging features favors adenocortical carcinoma. That is, size of tumor more than 4 cm is more likely to harbor SSE and suspicion become even stronger if it is, if it is more than 6 cm. Shape is well, usually well demarcated, but presence of irregular margins are seen in adenocortical carcinoma. Texture. Heterogeneous intensity noted and calcification can also be seen in the adenocortical carcinoma and it is an important finding. Atonation in unenhanced image, it is more than 10 HU. Vascularity. 
as the SSC is more, more vascular and contrast wash out is less than 50% after 10 minutes of contrast admin, uh, administration. Uh, on the right, this is the TNM staging of uh, <clears throat> adenocortical carcinoma. Despite several developments uh, that have been that have occurred in the diagnosis and management of uh, adenocortical carcinoma, the estimated survival remains low. SEC tends to grow and metastasize rapidly if untreated. In the above described case, adenocortical carcinoma had grown to a huge size and also metastasized to the lungs. The disease is aggressive and survival is significantly impacted by presence of local invasion and metastasis. Based on the TNM and European Network for st uh, Studying Adrenal Tumor and set classification of disease for SEC. Open surgery is the mainstay of treatment in stages 1 to 3. In the cases of severe symptoms, they require some of the medical therapy. Chemotherapy to control tumor growth and adrenolytic drug like mitotin to control symptoms of hormone excess needed. Chemotherapy was advised to the, patient, uh, to the parents of the child which they did not comply with in this case. Recurrence after surgery is common in the presence of risk factors, including positive margins, ruptured capsule, large size, elevated levels of proliferation marker KI67, hypercortisolism, increased mitotic rate, and high-grade classification. To conclude, adenocortical carcinoma is a rare entity associated with poor prognosis the median survival rates depending on the stage are as follows. With stage 1 to 2, it is 159 months, stage 3, 26 months, and stage 4, 5 months. Here, we have discussed an extremely rare case of adenocortical carcinoma. Currently, the only two definitive criteria for diagnosing malignancy are the presence of distant metastasis or local invasion on the imaging or surgical specimen. Current treatment algorithm for pediatric adenocortical carcinoma patients are based on research in adult population. Research for treatment of treatment modalities for childhood adenocortical carcinoma is limited, and the need for more investigation into the treatment of this unique population exists. Thank you. All right.